Good afternoon, race fans. I'm Chris Durrell. I'm here from RotorPros.com to bring you my DFS NASCAR track preview. So we've got a little bit of an interesting weekend here for the Camping World 400 Chicagoland Speedway. There was no action on track on Friday. So far today on Saturday, they've had both practices. So we're going to look at that data. Um, qualifying is until about 6.35 p.m. Eastern um, with it being a impound race as well. So inspection is going to be tomorrow morning before the race. Um, they will run first qualifying through 40th, but we will not know an actual starting order, official starting order, until tomorrow morning. So it's going to be a little bit tricky for DFS, but I will be going live again tomorrow morning on my YouTube channel, um, just going over answering questions. I'm going to be try and do it when it's live. When I find out when inspection starts, I will also uh, post that on my Twitter account and in the Rotopros chat room. Um, Twitter account is at Jaeger underscore bombs9. So Chicagoland Speedway, the Camping World 400, um, was the first race in the playoffs two years ago. Um, it's now mid-season, and it's a mile and a half D-shaped oval, so it's another intermediate track. It's actually the fifth intermediate track they've gone to this season that is using the full 2019 rules package with the air ducts, the 550 horsepower tapered spacer, and the high rear spoiler as well. Um, there's 24 degrees of banking here. It's an old asphalt surface, uh, opened in 2001 and it's worn down really good so it will wear tires really fast so that's going to come into play strategies of, of uh, um, you're probably going to see every pit stop guys are going to be going four tires every time I don't think a two tire strategy is going to work who knows we may see things a little bit different um, you know for track position but I think tires are going to be really important being that this track is a little bit older and a little more abrasive kind of compare it a little bit to Atlanta they didn't use the same rules package they didn't have the air ducts in Atlanta but it's an old race surface as well and then with it being an older race surface there's multiple lanes that drivers can use they really love this track it's one of the driver favorites and I compare it in that respect to what we see at Homestead um, you'll see guys like Larson uh, up there running the wall. You'll see um, guys like Harvick. He'll be down at the bottom, and then they got the middle lane. So we should see some passing with this package. Um, and you know what we've seen in the other four races, and I have added that data down here: uh, Vegas, Texas, Kansas, and Charlotte. Those four races all use the same rule package. So I've got their DraftKings and FanDuel points here on the sheet this week, as well as their finishes on each one as well. So you can see I've sorted it by average finish just to start. So Chase Elliott right there at the top, uh, ninth in Vegas, 13th in Texas, and fourth at both Kansas and Charlotte. So he's been strong. Um, three top tens and two top fives there. Now, one thing I have noticed just looking at those four races is there was two drivers, I believe Vegas, there was two right around 85 laps led. Texas, there was two around 60 to 70 laps led. But then when they got to Kansas and Charlotte, there was one driver in each of those races that led 100-plus laps. So kind of hard to go by and make a prediction of what we're going to see here this week. But I'm kind of just going to look at trying to find um, three or four drivers who have that potential to be dominators. Because uh, let's go look at the last six races here at Chicago down at that tab. What we'll see here is only twice we've seen a driver lead 100 plus laps here at Chicago in the last six races that I'm looking at here on my sheet. And then we go look at 50 plus laps. There's been multiple drivers do it in five of the last six and up to uh, three drivers in 2017 here led 50 plus laps. But then you get to the 20 plus laps and it's like four plus drivers in every single race have led 20 or more laps. So we're going to see some drivers, uh, especially with the new... Um, I guess it's not new anymore, but the stage racing tends to lead to some strategies where guys can get out front and lead laps. Maybe if they weren't the strongest car in the early runs, they will be um, when you get down to uh, stage two and stage three and get some laps there. So double digit place differential, um, kind of up and down. It's going to depend on qualifying. So I'm not really going to get into that so much. Um, we'll get into that more in the morning when once we have all that qualifying information in there. Um, so what we're going to do now is look at the practice information. I've got it loaded here. If you want to actually look at the times and the speeds, the number of laps and that sort of thing, you can definitely go to the practice tab and check it out here. I'm going to go look at it on the cheat sheet. I've got the model updated through practices. So a few changes here. I just wanted to color code it a little bit so it's a little bit easier to see practice one, practice two, and then the averages. So I've got practice one rank, and then we've got practice one time. Um, the 10 lap average and then the same for practice two and then we've got the practice rank average which is just this column and this column 
just the average rank and then just for viewing not for modeling is the practice time average so just comparing those lap times um, just so that you can see okay this driver's ranked fourth this one's ranked fifth when it comes to average practice times but how close were they on their lap times in practice and some of this practice I just finished watching. I watched both practices today. It was almost like a race. You got five cars in there. Guys are pushing each other and passing. Um, it was really, it was probably the best practice session I've watched all year. Out of the 16 races, I've probably seen um, practices at, I'd say, 12 or 13 of those races. I've, I've followed along, and this was by far the best one. They're getting out there. And so teammates is going to be something that we're going to want to look at. They're going to be working together. Um, not two or three, but usually, you know, like Logano and Kozlowski are going to be working together. Blaney, you're going to get him in there. Uh, Menard is kind of like the satellite in there. But then you get the Joe Gibbs cars and the Haas cars. You're definitely going to want to look at maybe stacking some together, some strategies. And it's all going to depend on qualifying once again. But looking at this practice data, um, first of all, we'll go and we'll look at practice one. So we had Alex Bowman at the top, and then Kurt Busch, Kevin Harvick. Um, so a nice little mix of four Chevys in the top five. And then all Fords, the uh, Toyotas were a little bit slow. Hamlin was the best Toyota out of those practices. Um, looking at the 10 lap averages there, kind of correlates here with the one lap averages. And then you get into practice two. And Joey Logano up at the top. So we've got Fords, three Fords, Logano, Boyer, and Harvick at the top. And then you got uh, uh, Bubba up there. I'm not real sure what to think of that. I didn't really see his fast lap there, which one it was. So I'm going to have to dig into that a little bit more here. But I'm not uh, really buying into it, just seeing as he was 24th in the 10 lap averages, but 4th in that one lap. So he, he could have been in a draft or something and really built up that good lap there. So I'll be looking into that. I'll touch on that a little bit tomorrow morning as well. We got Newman up there. He he's been fast, uh, short run car. But this weekend I'm looking. I think we're going to see some long runs. So something I'm looking at a lot is going to be the 10 lap averages, especially in that final practice. And we did see, and I'm going to bring this up tomorrow as well. In that final practice, a lot of drivers went in with about oh 20 minutes, 25 minutes, and put on uh, sticker tires and went back out. And one that stood out was Kevin Harvick. His he shot up the board right away at his five and 10 lap averages and led the way as you can see him here. So that was on fresh tires at the end of practice when he ran. Not all drivers went out. I believe there was about 13 or 14 drivers that uh, went and put fresh tires on at the end of practice and some of them just kept their tires the whole time and they'll put new ones on for qualifying. Um, so something to look at there as well. Jimmy was fast. He had some he had second and 10 lap averages. Bowman um, was up there. Elliott. So um, Hendrick Motorsports is definitely looking like they got some strong cars, a team that you're probably going to want to grab two or, or three of the four uh, in lineup combinations. I, it's, it's rare that a team, like a four-car team, is going to have all four cars finish near the front, so I kind of stay away from using all four in a team or even all three in a team. I'll, I'll try and do in the three-car teams. I'll try and run two um, of the three in lineups, and then the four-car teams, uh, the most I'll go is like three. I'd never really go four uh, in a lineup there. Certain circumstances will change, but definitely um, not going to be there this week. So you kind of got your top 10 in 10 lap averages here that we're going to look at. So practice is going to be important, but a couple drivers that stand out are definitely going to be these ones in the 10 lap averages. Uh, Denny Hamlin, definitely look strong in the 10 lap averages versus his one lap so he may not have the short run car but I think in you know if he's going to be qualifying fifth to tenth probably where we're going to see him I definitely like him um, in that spot at 8500 on DK for sure uh, 12,000 on FanDuel even is a good price for him especially I mean if you're doing uh, cash lineups he would be we'll just sort by FanDuel here for a second yeah he's seventh in pricing over there so that's a good good place to start. Um, Chase Elliott, Kyle Larson, as you can see, looking at the track history here, there's a lot of drivers in this range um, who have good track history here. Good in the 10 lap average in final practice. It's a good spot. You can go a little bit balanced if you're uh, running cash lineups this week. Okay, so a couple other drivers um, that stand out. We'll just go and we'll just sort by track history. We'll go have a look at that here real quick last two years so that kind of covers the last two races so something I changed around on the sheet also this week is um, the DK averages last two races the DK averages the last six races and then same with FanDuel here as well so we're just gonna go ahead and we're gonna sort by average finish three drivers Truex, Harvick and Larson have finished top five and 
each of the last two races. Um, as you can see, when you're looking at DraftKings scoring, Truex is up there because he hasn't qualified well here. He's picked up, well, two top fives and an average starting position of 19 and a half there. So he's going to be leading definitely in the DraftKings points. Um, that skews that a little bit. I think he's going to qualify better in like around 20th here this week. So kind of the same thing with Denny, his average start around 19 and a half. So qualifying is going to be huge. Like I said, that comes up at 635. Um, and then tomorrow morning, like I said, I'm going to go live again during inspection. I will post in the chat tonight as well as on my Twitter at Jaeger underscore bombs nine um, when I'll be going live um, so that you can kind of plan around it. I want, I really want to do it while inspections on um, just so I can kind of give you updates as cars are going through, who's failing and that sort of thing. Um, and make sure to answer lots of questions. Again, it went over really well last week. So thanks for watching. Um, this is a nice little track preview. If you have some questions before qualifying or even after qualifying before the video tomorrow, definitely hit me up in the Roto Pros chat room here. Um, members chats where you're going to want to go. If you're not a member, get over to rotopros.com. We've got a free trial going right now um, for our weekly, monthly, and yearly members if you sign up. So go check that out. You can come in, see what we're all about, ask us questions, decide from there. Um, so pretty much you're going to get the race. You're going to get tomorrow's baseball, Monday's baseball, uh, Canada Day, also my birthday. Um, so, you know, I'm going to be in and out if, I, if a little bit delayed. i am uh, got some festivities planned for the big Canada Day thing. So, um, but yeah, definitely hit me up and I will get back to you and answer all your questions. Thanks for watching. Let's go watch some qualifying this afternoon. Sheet will be updated after that. And then, like I said, live tomorrow. Talk to you later, guys.